Hello, friends, and welcome to the Secrets of a Witch podcast with me, Sabrina Scott, where I talk all about life, love, healing, magic, witchcraft, tarot, spiritual things, and everything in between, as we do. So I kind of want to keep it brief today, though I know I say that every single time, and it always is a bit long, but whatevs. So here's the background story to this. So... And if you guys know this about me, it's probably a very surprising fact, but I really love the reality show Love is Blind. (laughs) So I know you're going to be like, oh my god, what? Sabrina's watching trash TV. Yes, absolutely I am, motherfucker. But I don't really like most reality shows or like most trash tv like i find most of it is a total waste of time and i just don't care so most of what i watch is like documentaries if i am gonna watch anything as a sagittarius i am one of those people who loves learning and education and i don't like stuff that's kind of stupid so you know i don't like stuff that makes me feel like my brain is rotting out of my head i like to feel like i'm improving myself and i'm learning something and i'm reflecting you know And so if you don't know the show, you probably are living under a rock or have better things to do or just chill in other ways. But I'll just explain the premise just like briefly so you guys understand what I'm talking about. So what happens is people are in these like thing, basically like rooms called pods and they have dates through a wall without seeing each other. And then someone has to choose whether or not they're going to propose to the person before they ever see them. So the whole premise of the show is like, is love blind? Can you fall in love with someone before you ever see them? Anyway, it's very dramatic. This season in particular is incredibly dramatic. Various explosions, various things. Personally, I find this show interesting because I'm interested in love. I'm interested in human relationships. I'm interested in seeing if I can predict who works out and who doesn't, whose relationship is healthy and whose isn't. I find it interesting because it's also one of those things where it's like, what is happening off camera? What is the the full story? And of course, that's my cat Awas, who sometimes watches the show with me. Um, but it's interesting, right? Like, since so much of my work as a tarot reader and spiritual coach and teacher is often about human relationships, helping people heal from shitty ones, doing tarot readings to see what someone's romantic prognosis is. Human relationships take up a lot of our time and energy. And so it's something that I find fascinating. Like I read so many books about psychology both the negative and positive side of it. I've read so many books about cults and abuse, and I've also read a lot of books about love and healthy relationships. I just find it all so interesting. And so since I, that is like a little hobby, I guess, of mine studying that, the show for me kind of fits into that category. It's interesting. But anyway, this episode is not about love is blind. This episode is about haters. Because I've noticed that, like, for some reason, a lot of people who watch the show have a lot of opinions, and they're, like, lashing out at the people on the show, like, on social media, on TikTok, on Instagram, on other, like, discussion forums online, and the dis- some of the discussions that I've seen happen online is I've looked a few up just out of curiosity to just, like, see what the discourse was, People, like, it's crazy to me how much time some people spend hating on these people they've never met, whose stories they don't fully know, because reality TV is very edited and curated, and narratives happen on TV and in journalism that are not necessarily true, And I'm not saying don't believe any journalism. I'm not saying all news is fake news. But as someone who has been in multiple documentaries and been featured in multiple magazines at this point, I've stopped reading and watching the stuff I'm featured in because I know that people are going to say whatever it is they want to say, right? Like, one of the first documentaries I was ever in, we filmed for like 12 hours and... 
I talked so much about philosophy and what I believe and all of this stuff, but do you know what made it into the documentary? My dick jokes, okay? So (laughs) I looked kind of crazy in the documentary because they cut out all of my philosophy. They cut out everything meaningful that I said and they just, it was like a jokes reel, basically, like a documentary of just jokes. And so I felt really misrepresented, right? And people had opinions and I just decided I was not going to read any of them after a lot of them were bad and I just was like okay you know I'm moving on and that taught me a really important lesson about documentaries and film and reality tv and editing and how do like what happens on the cutting room floor and the editing and what narrative do people want to spin but anyway this episode is also not about journalism and it's not about documentaries and it's not about editing what i really want to rant about is the haters and my cat awaz agrees obviously thank you awaz for always chiming in at the exact right moment she wants to say hi to you guys She has what I would call, like, resting bitch meow. It's like she always sounds grumpy, even when she probably isn't grumpy. Like, she's fine. She just wants to hang out. But anyway, like, what I've seen is just the self-assuredness of all these, like, armchair psychologists on Instagram or on Reddit or on Quora or on, like, forums online, Facebook, you know, Instagram, whatever, where people are just being total fucking assholes, either while they're talking about these total strangers on the TV, getting into, like, giant flame wars with people who have a different opinion and who have compassion for different contestants on the show, and then these people are, like, literally sending death threats and, like, crazy mean messages to these people on the show, these people they don't even know. And it's these people that they're so invested in that they've never met, that they just saw on TV... These people who are real people with real lives and real ups and downs. And so I find this behavior like very interesting for a bunch of reasons and also very disturbing. And I just wish that everyone could just leave everyone alone. Like instead of being a hater, instead of being like, oh my God, what I really want to do with my time right now is tell this total stranger that I saw on TV that they're the incarnation of the devil that's exactly what I want to spend my time doing I want to send this total stranger like a giant flame list of like vitriolic information oh I know what I want to do I want to argue on reddit with people about this person I saw on tv for like five hours I want to argue with someone else and call them names because they disagree with me it's a really weird way for people to spend their time But being a hater, it's like a weird hobby. But I I don't understand it. Like, I feel like it is this thing that people do in order to feel control over their sad, pathetic lives. And so it just makes me feel sad that that's how some people want to spend their life. And, like, I'm not ever going to be able to convince those folks to behave otherwise or to stop, like, wasting their life arguing about shit and, like, calling people names and, like just being a bully like it's not cute like honestly if we're adults we should not be behaving that way like it's fucking crazy and I think it's fucking crazy even when teenagers and kids do it like it's never okay and yet we're in this culture right now where anonymity and social media makes it really easy for everyone with a fucking keyboard to be a total fucking cunt in someone else's direction like a total stranger whereas like if they said that to someone's face in person they would get popped or you know, actually have to fucking deal with what someone has to say back. And it's crazy. And, you know, there's been some times in my life where I've been on the receiving end of shit like that online. Like, between y'all and me, there is a very famous witchy person on the internet that posted a really long fucking rant about me on Twitter, blocked me on Instagram, And then, like, forgot that they did that. And then, like, complimented my work elsewhere. Like, it honestly is very silly. It's very silly. And I just, like, don't get it. I just don't get it. And, like, that situation I don't really care about. Like, whatever. I will never name who that is publicly. Because, like, it doesn't fucking matter. But 
I just find it, and, like, of course, I block people, too, sometimes, but, like, am I gonna make a giant rant about this person? Like, no, I would never do that. Like, am I gonna maybe riff and talk about it as a life lesson here or elsewhere? Like, maybe. Like, if there's a learning lesson, then, yeah, I will talk about it, but what I learned from all of this stuff is... And like existing online, being a person on the internet for the past bunch of years, which I did not set out to do, by the way, it just kind of happened by accident, is that a lot of people who do feel unhappy are going to spend their time critiquing people rather than creating their own lives. And I do think there's a time and place for critique. Like I think it can be an interesting and fun intellectual exercise. Like, I do have a graduate degree after all. I'm working on another one. So, like, I get it. I get the point of being an academic. I get the point of, like, you know, really diving into a topic and analyzing something. Like, I understand that. I think that's important. But, and when it comes to, you know, social media or reality TV, it's like these are real human beings you don't know that person. You only see a tiny sliver. And yet, people watching that, they think they know everything. And then they, like, troll that person. They flame that person. They call that person horrible names. And it doesn't reflect on the person on TV. It reflects on the person making the comment. They look like a fucking idiot, in my opinion. It just shows, like, wow, like, wouldn't you rather be reading a book? Wouldn't you rather be making art? It's very weird. And it's like... I think it makes sense to critique or have a discussion, a respectful discussion, while realizing we don't know everything. But I think hater culture is, like, very weird. And I guess there's something called stan culture, which I don't fully understand. But it's, like, when people are super fans of things and they just get really intense. And I'm sure we could get into the concept of parasocial relationships. Google it if you don't know what it is. But it's basically, like, it started with like celebrities and especially with the rise of tv where people felt like they knew celebrities like they have a relationship with them even though the celebrity has no fucking clue who they are but because they watch the person on tv every day they feel like they do and like i think social media has become an extension of that where we're all like these micro celebrities so everyone thinks they know us but they don't and so weirdly people feel entitled to be haters or to i don't know like have some fucking opinions about people they don't even know and it's just like sad like can we just all stop doing that can we stop like demonizing people we've literally never met in our life can we stop thinking the worst of everybody that we see on tv or social media or whatever can we stop like hating on celebrities can we just fucking stop it's so boring and it's so immature and I'm actually pretty certain that most celebrities are way cooler, more down to earth, way more interesting, way smarter, way more resilient, way more wise than most people give them credit for because they have to deal with this weird thing of fame and public and private and parasocial relationships and what's real and who's real and who's not. There's a lot to learn from that. And so these people on these reality shows, it's like, I think they have another version of that too, right? Where it's like, they have this particular wisdom of like, oh, wow. Like you, you learn something about media when that happens to you. You learn something about how the media works. You learn something about human psychology of like how fucking certain people are about things they know nothing about. You know, and when the topic is you and you're like, okay, well, you have not lived in my life, so I don't know why you think you know me so well. It's like very interesting. And I remember when people try to cancel me, part of how I stayed grounded in reality was like, these people don't even know what wine I drink. These people don't even know what cocktails I like. These people don't even know what I'm allergic to. Why the fuck do they get to have an opinion on me that matters? You know? These people don't know what it sounds like, you know, when I, like, laugh at a friend's joke. Like, these people don't know some of the most important things about me. And yet they're going to try to cancel me on the internet because they disagreed with, like, one thing I said. Or, you know, they're making some random bullshit up about me that isn't true. 
And so I had to ground myself in what is reality and what's not reality. And guess what? I know my reality and these random people on the internet don't actually know who I am. And so it's really weird, right? And like, I just find it so interesting that some people spend their time trying to destroy others. Like they go on these like mobs of being a hater and attack random people. And I was mobbed by like haters a few years ago. It was like fucking terrible. It was so stressful. And I had to remember like, this is not reality. Like it feels like it is, but these are just random people who literally don't know anything about me who are just being fucking psycho in my direction. And it's like this weird drive to control and to destroy. And I wish that as a culture, we were more interested in creation. And when we're not interested in something, I wish we just disengaged from it. Like, that seems like a better way to go about it. If you don't like something, just don't pay attention to it. If you don't like someone, just don't pay attention to them. Why try to like make someone into who you want them to be who the fuck like why we have we shouldn't be controlling other people that way it doesn't make sense and so i think being a hater is really about the desire to control and it's probably to cope with a lack of control they feel in their own lives but it's just like weird i just wish that all the trolls and all the haters just like got a life and stopped doing what they're doing and just touched grass and like just stopped being crazy i just wish that's what would happen So if you're being bothered by haters, just ignore them, block, delete, ignore. If you're someone who behaves like a hater on the internet, please stop because you're not making the world a better place by doing that. It's a stupid way to spend your time. And that is what I think. So again, this has been a longer episode than I thought, but here is my rant against being a hater. Life is too short to spend your time being a hater. If you don't like it, just move the fuck on. If you're not a newspaper critic, or if you're not having an academic blog or articles about whatever, just chill and, like, spend your time focusing on what you love. That's the way to lead a happier life. I really believe it. Where we focus our attention, that's what grows. So why would you want to waste your time focusing on what you hate? Whether that's a person, a place, or a thing. If you hate where you live, move. If you hate your partner, dump them. If you hate your parents, stop talking to them. It's that simple. We have a choice on what we do with our attention, our very precious attention. All right, friends, with that, I leave you. This is the episode for today. If you love this podcast, please subscribe, whatever the fuck it is on podcast land. I don't know if it's subscribe, follow, subscribe, whatever. Please share with a friend and please give me a five-star review. Of course, check out my most recent YouTube videos under the live section, youtube.com slash Sabrina Scott. You can say hi on Instagram at Sabrina M. Scott. And of course, do check out my new offerings that are super cheap recession era witchcraft and magic may you can check out both those on my website it should be under the courses section all right friends that is all i have to say for today more of good vibes more good vibes less hateration up in this dancery okay okay that's all friends have a good one bye